Yes. Okay, three quick ones. If we have something blessed in the new right, should we have them read blessed? Statues, medals, rosaries? You can, but it's not necessary. Not necessary. Unless you're talking about something that's specifically ordered towards the spiritual warfare, I would recommend it only for the sake of um, uh, getting that extra protection. Okay. Does a possessor who happens to be a deceased member of a family with a generational sin or demon uh, is he accompanied by a, a demon as well? Or would he ever Almost always. I've only seen one case where that wasn't the case. And last one. Um, in case of adopted children, uh, can a generational spirit from the adopted child come and cause possession in the family? Yes. The adopted child? Yes. Thank you. One of the things that I often do is I'll recommend, especially with, depending on where they're adopting them from, or if they're adopting them because the parents had... Um, you know, specific issues like alcohol or drug abuse or things like that, I'll tell, I'll often recommend. Um, I'll just say, well, you know, if the kid is normal, don't worry about it. Because the, the general principle with demons is, is if you see something, if you don't see something, it's probably not there. Probably not. So, um, so if you if you have to adopt the kids and you don't notice anything, then I wouldn't worry about it. But as if you start noticing it, you might want to have any generational, take it to a priest who can break any generational spirits in relationship with Also, <coughs> Pray to Our Lady of Sorrows to ask what the generational spirit you're dealing with before you go see the priest, that you can at least have something maybe to, to, um, to give to him. He shows up. Yes? Are these free Benedictine medals already blessed? No, I have no clue. You'd have to ask whoever. <laughs> they are exercised by Father Dennis. Okay. Right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. I'm trying to find out what spirit you're supposed to do. How do you get the name? The name, you don't want his proper name. What you want is his behavior. So if he's, if he's making you angry or if he's making you, you just say spirit of anger, I bind you. Or like if you're kids, you know, if it's spirit of disobedience or something like that. So you look at the behavior and then that's the name you give to it and that's what you bind. Yes. Um, there's a show on TV, Long Island Medium. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a lady. She says she's Catholic. See dead people, and she'll tell them, you know, like, oh, this is what your dead relative is saying. Can you comment on that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, being a medium is another form of diabolic channeling, and it's a, it's a, it's an avenue. That's what seances are. You're basically what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to the spirits talking through you or communicating with you, and um, there's a lot of misunderstanding. A lot of them think that, you know, oh, well, there's good spirits out there that you can communicate with. Yeah, they're called angels, but God is the one who determines when and when they cannot. You can't do anything to determine that. So, um, whereas if you try to do something to set that up, it's a superstitious act, and that's when the demon, you open yourself up, the demons can get involved. So in her particular case, you know, I, I've watched her just a little bit, just to get a sense of her. I think she's, my take on it is that, um, my take on it is, is that she's one of these people that's extremely adept at reading situations and people and can kind of get stuff and do certain things. Whether there's anything that's diabolic about it, I'm not real sure because I haven't seen anything like it, but they, she's just really adept at reading people. The other thing is, too, is they, do, they do the normal tricks. You know, there's somebody here who's, whose parent just recently died and, you know, you're suffering from it. Well, you can say that about any group this size, right? So you just have to watch for those kinds of things. So I tell people, well, avoid those kinds of shows, avoid the paranormal shows, because going around looking at that stuff, one of the big thing that was in vogue for a long time was um, going to cemeteries and trying to summon the dead, you know, that kind of thing. You just open yourself up to get back. Okay. Uh, who thinks our own body is a divine decree. St. Thomas says that the will is a universal power. And so there is some speculation that things like telekinesis and things of that sort were caught with Adam and Eve had them. And that at the fall, God truncated it and, and restricted it by, um, to their, remove their ability to affect things outside of themselves. So once you're released from the body, the will still retains that universal power. So it has the ability to affect other material things, God permitting. We know this to be the case because of the fact that Our Lady does it, the saints do it, and things of that sort. So, uh, in relationship to enlightening our mind or putting something in our imaginations, etc. Okay. Um, so, and, and, and there are certain instances where angels have actually moved other people's bodies during times of distress or what have you. So we know that those things... Uh, not angels, yes, angels have, but with people, 
the, the idea is, is that when people are damned and they're particularly bad, under certain circumstances, God will allow them to come back and be able to influence in the same manner that a demon does. So, um, now, there's a small percentage, very small percentage of exorcists who just says, no, they're just demons, they're just faking their people. No, there's a real distinction, because one of the, at least in my experience with them, with angels, when it's fallen angels, that is demons, you'll ask them, you'll command them to tell you, what were you damned for? It's always a spiritual sin, like pride, envy, something like that. It's always that. Whereas when it's a human being, it's almost always something tangible. So one guy that I um, that I knew, he uh, that was possessing this one woman. He was he was damned for having hung a man. Another woman, uh, or another uh, case was that one of the possessors was um, her great great aunt, and you know we commanded her to tell, "What were you damned for? Promiscuity." So it was funny because every time that she would manifest. All of a sudden, the woman's facial features would get really soft, and she'd start twirling her hair, and you're just like, a little frivolous here. But the point is, is that um, there, there have to, they have to be something, that they have to be, it has to be particularly bad. In the case of Annalise Mikkel, that she, she was possessed by, um, if it was accurate, Hitler, Nero, uh, the parish priest, as I mentioned, who they found out was particularly bad. So it's, it, it, they have to, they, it's not just, you know, like I said yesterday, Aunt Bessie, who happened to, you know, didn't want to go to Mass on Sunday. So it's not usually that. It's usually something that's really bad. Even though that is more simple. Yes? Um, as a, with a doctor having a patient, or in my case, a therapist having a client, does that give us any authority or not? Mm -hmm. okay. Although, once you adopt someone, in other words, it's a legal thing. So once you adopt somebody legally, you can do it. Um, if you have power of attorney over somebody and they become incompetent, once they lose that competence, then the authority would kick in. So it has to do, yeah, so in that particular case, no, but you can do it in the other way where you just say, um, in fact, I'll, I'll recommend this often to people who have the therapist who come to me and says, you know, I think my client has diabolic problems. So I'll just say, well, you know, one of the ways you can find out is just say the, the binding prayer, but don't say it as a command, just say it, you know, Jesus will ask you to bind the spirit of action. You can say it mentally. You don't have to say it out loud. You can just say it mentally and see if you notice a change. Yes. Um, is there anything for us to know which saint is a specific nemesis to a certain Not without asking. Or unless you're an exorcist, you happen to know it because of caseload. So, yes. Once your children are grown and married, do you still have authority over them? You do. Oh, yes. How <laughs> uh, that pays itself out? How that pays itself out? The difference is the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, That's correct. No, he, he can no, he can use them over his family. The mother can use them over the children. The um, ch the the wife, because she has rights over his body by virtue of the um, uh, marital contract, she can say it over him too. Does that make sense? Over her husband. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's always trying to get the people that are under his influence to make everybody else think he's a great guy. Yes? About that authority of the binding. So, say you have a legal divorce, but you're still married to the spouse of the church. Do you have authority? The authority comes from the sacrament, not from the, the civil effects. Yes. Okay, this is kind of a broader question, but. When you look at the Illuminati or the enlightened ones, that would be you know, basically human agents of the devil on, on the earth. Right. You know, they're, they're pushing the new world order. You know, yes. Currency, food, industrial medical complex, corporate profiteering, population control, other things. Yes. And one of the things that, you know, they say is they have control over Washington, or the Washington, I believe there, mm -hmm. or the oblique in Europe and the oblique in Rome. 
of having control over religion, money, and war. You know, the enormous order, the new world order. There, there's people, I say, that they have infiltrated the Catholic Church in a major way. Mm. Could that be true? And so, what do we do for spiritual warfare? Yeah, I mean, I think the documentation, I think, is pretty clear that they did. In fact, you know, um, the infiltration of the Catholic Church has already testified publicly before Congress by Bella Dodd. I mean, Bella Dodd said that the, um, and the Freemasons, the Congress, were very closely together, but she said, we flooded the Catholic seminaries. We got over a thousand um, communists into the Catholic seminaries in this country alone. So, is there an influence? Yes, there actually is. Um, the place of the greatest spiritual power is also, or the greatest, greatest spiritual influence is also, for the good, is also the place of the greatest diabolic attack. So it just makes sense that they would be attacking. Do the, uh, the you know, so the, the point being is, is that, is it there? Yes. These things are all predicted anyway. All these things, the New World Order is, is in effect predicted by the saints who talk about how governmental structures and financial systems would come under the control of a single agency, but that was necessary in order for the, um, the Antichrist. So, um, that's just all that means. I mean, so, is it there, the spiritual warfare? Yeah, it's there. You just have to pray and keep yourself protected from your family so that any of the effects of it don't occur. That's about all that you can really do, because these things are, you can pray against them and you can do certain things, but they are largely out of our hands. The one thing I keep telling people is, so well, this is really funny. Um, I, I was a mechanic for about 25 years off and on for my father, because I would go home and I would work with, work with him ever since I was a teenager. But even, even after I was a priest, he would get busy, so he'd come down and help him out um, when I was home on, on vacation. And so I'm one of these guys that just likes working with my hands. So I, I went and I bought um, an assembly of a torch set. And I, I would go to get the, 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 the bottles. And I get to the, uh, the location, I'm in my casting, and they're behind me, he's suddenly in my costume mode. And this guy, he said, he just, as we're loading it, he just asked me, he says, hey, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He says, what do you think about the way the world is going right now? And I told him, it's in free fall. And he says, and he says yeah, that's what I've noticed. That since about 2008, roughly, it's, this thing is literally spiraling down with nobody putting any brakes on it whatsoever. There is literally no public agency that's trying to slow this thing down that is effective in any manner whatsoever. And I think that's just kind of generally where we're at. Um, and some people ask me, well, what do you think about that? I said, well, I just think it's God setting us up to get spanked. Because we're bad, we're bad children and needs to spank us and it's coming. So what that's going to look like, I don't know. I really don't want to speculate too much on that. So, yeah. When you're doing the exorcism ceremony, you're saying you're speaking to the, to the demons. Are they speaking through the other person's voice? or Sometimes it's their voice, sometimes it's the demon's voice. Well, or I've only heard physical. demons speak directly to me without any kind of physical agency once. They usually don't do that. Christ restricts that usually. So what they do is they'll, they'll move the vocal cords and stuff to actually speak to the person. So, yeah. When I have authority over my nephew who comes to stay with my husband, husband and myself every summer, he comes from a broken home, divorced parents, and my brother's on the road, he's a trucker, and so he's not in the house with us, so he gives us charge over his son. So would I have authority... Uh, not the spiritual authority that would let you do the binding prayers. Okay. How? By command. So you just you just ask Christ. After he asked him. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, response to the question: Could she ask the Father to extend his authority over her? No, it's not delegatable. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. When you said like we're in free fall, I I think we have to start not being closed in ourselves and merely protect. I believe everything that you said, you know, yeah. it's wonderful. But I think we have to reach out. Oh, yeah. And I have a problem because the Holy Father says we have to risk ourselves and smell like the sheep. Mm. And I can give you an example. I only told this story to Richard Holland here. Mm. I, I uh, was uh, in Japan, uh, in Hokkaido, as a catechist. And uh, the pastor told me, you know, I could go to the Shigano Tani, uh, this coal mining town, and I had eight people would sit in a room on the floor, which, you know, was 
the bedroom and everything else. You know, they, one room serves everything. My problem was I, I taught the catechism, and uh, it was in Japanese, and then used the scriptures. They, they had the scriptures there, and so I could relate them to Christ. However, when I looked on the wall, there was a five-foot-wide poster on there. There was a suntory. The woman was totally naked with a suntory whiskey bottle right at the proper place. You see, obviously right. it looked like a phallic symbol, right. but she'd be looking at me all the time as I'm teaching, okay? <laughs> now, I cannot stop that because in Japan, you can't tell people how to decorate <laughs> the house in Rudman. So my my thing was to just keep teaching. How much teaching. it takes to no, start with you? This is the devil looking, you know, right at work. Okay. And uh, right here at the time when we were finishing and they were getting ready for baptism, I went in, and lo and behold, there was oh, two old pictures there, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Sacred Heart of Mary. I didn't say anything. Right. After the class was over, he said, you know, what we had on the wall after your teaching here didn't speak to us anymore. <laughs> that was a sad yeah. story. After that, I went to Oyubari to start out. Well, the teacher would invite me into the home at night. And, of course, they had these liter bottles of beer. And in Japan, you cannot pour your own beer. He has to pour it for you, and I have to take care of him. And so after I get loaded with beer, <laughs> I said, man, I can't, you know, but... I couldn't drink it anymore. Well, he thought I wanted whiskey, so I'll come to Suntory. Your wife was the Suntory lady now, clothed, however, and I had this whiskey. Well, by the time I left the house, I said I had, I had things to do the next day. I was radiating. I had to walk in the snow. Now, the snow was two meters deep and we boarded up the windows on the first floor and uh, so I was radiating I, and I, I remember telling a priest I said you know this boozing for Christ is kind of hard <laughs> <laughs> what I'm bringing out is what the Holy Father is saying you kind of risk yourself a little bit and that side can wear you out you know you know what I'm saying and uh, I made uh, I never t was told anything about the devil, or I, mean, I believe in the devil and the angels and pray. Yeah, I mean, it's true that you have to, yeah, okay. There's a distinction between you don't risk your family, but it's true that we, it, it's based upon our own particular circumstances that there might be, we might be in a circumstance where we do have to go out of ourselves in order to help somebody. We just have to make sure that we're not putting ourselves at spiritual risk. Uh, of committing any kind of grave sin or anything. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree, you have to help people, but right now my basic point is is that you have to, you know, it, it's, in fact, I think what you said brings up a very important point. Right now I think it's gotten so bad that in trying to get the overall, like the governmental structure and all these things straightened out, it's not, you're not going to get those things straightened out. It's got to be on a person-by-person -person basis. Right, right. That's where you've got to deal with people. And when you see people are open, then that's when you make the, uh, the entrance. Yes? You mentioned something about the Freemasons just a little bit ago. I've been a family member a couple generations back who was involved. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very low level, not high level. So, you know, so I, I doubt he knew anything about right. high level. So I just wondered about our family's vulnerability. Um, all they have to do is enter the lowest level, and your family can become subject to the Freemasonic curse. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have it. But you want to say the prayers to break the free grace on the curse. There's a specific curse. There's a set of prayers, yes. Is that on your website? Uh, no, but you can email me through the website and ask for it. Yes. Yes, do we have the authority to bind under a God children? No. Uh, God that's, a, that's a common opinion. Um, that most, the, most, um, most, because. The godparents' role is to correct, not to command. So as a result of that, they don't think that, that most exorcists do not think they do. So, yes. How common is possession? And then another question, is yoga really dangerous? 
Uh, as far as the possession is, it's still fairly uncommon, but it's becoming more common. I mean, it's, there's caseload is increasing because people are just doing a lot of evil things. Um, in fact, it kind of reminds me that, it, 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 again, that prophecy of St. Francis where he says, during the time of tribulations, demons will have extraordinary power. It almost seems like it be there. But, um, so, it's not that common, but, it, you know, it's becoming more common. People ask me, you know, what percentage of the population is probably possessed? You know, it's hard to even tell. Um, like I said, only three out of the 150 people, and that was after a vetting process last year that we looked at, were possessed. So it's not, it, again, it's, it's not very common. Diabolical obsession, I think, is very common. It's about, in the sense, it's not like, um, it's not like um, diabolic temptation, but <clears throat> somebody asked me one time, well, how much, what percentage of the population in this country do you think is diabolically obsessed? I said, somewhere probably around 25%. And uh, we personally, the exorcists tend to think it's because of the rise of pornography and things of that sort. Then, it was shortly after I said that, about two weeks after I said that, they came out with a study and said that 22% of college graduates and basically the general population have either, either seen or are currently seeing a psychologist. So it's about the same kind of a statistic. Um, as to yoga, yoga is, um, if you, and don't kill the messenger, I'm just telling you what, what the experts in the history of the practitioners of yoga say it is. They make it very clear that the stretching and the positions in yoga are actual representations of Eastern deities. It says more than once, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, it says all the gods of the Gentiles are demons. It's totally true. Basically what they are is they're representations of demons. I have seen people become possessed through practicing yoga. A lot of people say, well, I, am, I think it's fine. There's not a lot left. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, this is what the thing is in its representation. And so you, it's an open door. Objectively speaking, it's an open door. I tell people, avoid it. Yes? Are Jezebel, Delilah, uh, Apollyon, the Destroyer, real demons? Yes. I went to a graduation party and they rented the lodge at the, at the Freemason place. Did I open myself up to infestation by going to that party? <laughs> yes, I've noticed something speak to me. Yeah. <laughs> You can, yes, but like I, I say, if you didn't notice anything after you left, then there's probably nothing there. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. <laughs> so, yes. Could you spell that website? Andrew? Yeah, it's www. Of course, a u x i l i u m c h r i s t i a n o r u m. It includes the invocation of Our Lady as help of Christians. Yes. Father, could you please tell us what good we can say? Say we get invited to somebody's house that we don't know, so we find out that they have got questionable books, they've got iconography that we don't recognize, it looks like it might be from like the Sumerian period of soul, God. And we always find ourselves in a situation where we seem to worship differently than it is of Satan. After we leave the premises, what prayers specifically should we say to protect ourselves well, from exposing ourselves to something like that? Well, there's two things. I think one is just ask your guardian to guide you so you don't end up going into houses like that. The second <laughs> one is, is while you're there, just if you see something, just say, say ask St. Michael C. you know, protect me and ask our lady to protect you. And usually you'll, it will work. So, okay. Yes? When we say our prayers, say, to the saints or to the angels or even this, and we say it to ourselves quietly, can't they hear, yes. understand? Yes. The way it works is, is this. Our thoughts are shrouded from all other intelligent creatures except God. And then God can reveal it to specific people, except God structured into the very nature of angelic communication and also uh, human communication that is currently restricted at the moment under certain circumstances, that if you, by your will, direct your thoughts to another intelligent creature or to God, that that person hears it. So we pray for our loved ones in heaven. 
Yes, you can pray to them and they'll hear you. Even in our quietness and our angels. Yes, it's just it can be done just purely we mentally. Can make this command even within ourselves without saying it out loud. That's correct. So, in the next life, um, God will lift the veil and you will see even what's in people's minds. So, yes. So, are there any prayers that to be effective need to be spoken out loud or can they all be prayed mentally, like the auxiliary Christian arm prayers instead? Uh, it just depends on the nature of the thing that you're dealing with. Um, uh, usually, um, my experience is if it's said it loud, it usually has a bit more efficacy. Um, but sometimes it just depends on the particular demon. You can do it mentally, and he's hearing you, so he obeys. So, yes? There's a scapula called the scapular protection. I don't know what the official name is. I I think it came from a venerated possible saint from the late 1800s. Or are you familiar with the big purple one? I am. I can't I'm find. The motor oven, actually. They're so hard to find online. I'm wondering if it's one of those things that haven't been approved by the church. And I've just been discovering slightly because it's been really effective telling people to get them and they have problems with purity. It almost like stops the temptations. It's uh, Yeah, so I, you know, I, okay, you, there's, a, there's a website called sacramentals.org. You just go on there, and they, they, they actually have them. They kept they always keep them. They've got a big promoter of um, Mary Julie Jehani, which if you ever get a chance to read her um, visions, they're quite astounding, actually. They're like 13 uh, they're $13. I thought they are kind of pricey, probably because they can't find them too many places. That... What are they? I think it's, a, it's, I think it's because, um, yeah, I think it's because they're extremely hard to come by. They have to be made from scratch, basically. Uh, they're not mass-produced. What are they called? They're called purple scapular. And basically, the yeah, basically what the purple scapular is is that Mary Julie Jehani um, asked Christ if for a scapular, and he gave her the purple purple scapular, which is supposed to protect you and your family from the effects of the chastisement. So, so that's one of the things I recommend put in your house. You don't have to wear it; you just put it in your house. So, yeah. so you don't. I wear the brown, so you don't wear both of them. No, you okay. just put it in your house. Yes. Well, I have a wonderful grandson who's in med school, which is really, really, really difficult. But I know he's having a really hard exam. I asked my guardian angel to be with me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Okay, we better cut it off there. If you'll uh, kneel, I'll give you a blessing. Benediction de omnipotentis, patris et fili, et spiritus sovicius, et sumerbos, et manit semper.